Not ready. Not ready. Ah, not ready. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton here on Monday. Speaking of not ready, Monday, April 25th. Just was asking Bonnie, is it the fourth week of April? Oh, yeah, yesterday was the fourth Sunday of April, so fourth week of April. That means uh, May is right around the corner. I wish that the weather would come to understand that. Um, we're at 35 right now. 36 was the high here in Wisconsin, and the low is 25. So I'm guessing the temperature is going down during the day, not up. I don't think there's any snow in the forecast, though, although the temperatures are right. And it's been windy. It was windy on Sunday. Oh, man, was it windy. Those of here, you here in Wisconsin, you knew that. My eyes are not playing nice with me. I apologize. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, so here we are, 25th of April, overcast, cold. It's like winter has said, I'm not done yet. Yeah. But it will. this too will pass. After yesterday, it, uh, well, well, Saturday, Saturday down by Wausau was 70. In fact, somebody told me they were there in Wausau a little later than I was, and they said they had 72 on their car thermometer. I thought maybe it was going to be kilt weather, but... Not yet. Not yet. I had some kind of masculine leggings to go with it, maybe. Anyway, we have Bonnie says German. Knee-high sock, knee -high stockings, which that's quite often what you wear with a kilt in colder weather. That way, just from your knee to the top of the, or the bottom of the kilt is where the cold air comes. Well, good morning. Um, we are on the Monday of the second week in, uh, of the season of Easter, um, and I, but I want to have the the readings. Uh, well, I, Sunday was Sunday in the in the treasury of daily prayer that I use this thing here um, was the giving of the law in Exodus, and I and I we need to do that. Um, so you may have noticed if you saw the post that the Exodus readings are in two parts and they're fairly expansive. Um, so we have a longer reading today because I'm going to read Sunday and Monday. Um, I, but however, we're going to start with the psalm from Sunday, and um, which is from Psalm 119, and uh, which is the long acrostic about the law, um, uh, and, and read both Sunday and Monday's Exodus reading, and then we'll talk about uh, those. Um, so a little longer reading today. Um, but let's see who's here. Say good morning to everybody uh, who's, who's here or who we'll watch later. Glenn, good morning to you. And uh, Jill and John, good morning. Connie and Robin, good morning. Yeah, welcome back to Bonnie. Yeah, she got back last night uh, early, uh, well, 7 o'clock-ish. They made good time, I think. Um, what do you do? It was storming in Chicago on the way back through again, she said. Neil and Geraldine, good morning. Mary, good morning. Glad to see you here. Renee, good morning. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Ashley, good morning. God's blessings, my friend. John Sutton, the now retired organizer of the Carvin event at the Beckham. I noticed that uh, car, sign for Carvin 7, now with a K, Carvin. Uh, is is set up. Um, it won't be at the Beckham anymore. It's going to be at the Westby High School. But yesterday was the sixth one, and uh, that's that's my dad. And uh, he's been organizing that carving since it started. He's the one that got it off the ground, and uh, COVID kind of put a hitch in their steps. So last year was carving four and five, uh, and then this was carve in six and it looks like you got a good carver for next year uh in april that's in, in april so wood carving wood carving moosh doc good evening and there's uh there's deb and ann good morning grant if he's nearby good morning to you and there's bonnie blah 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 yeah 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 all right well let's uh good morning to you guys and to everyone who watches later before after whatever 
And um, I'm glad you take a little time for God's word each day. That's the most important thing. Let's uh, get into this. If you have a Lutheran service book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families. That's where, oh, Kathy, good morning. Slipping in there. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and start. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise, good evening. Glad you could join us as well. Uh, our psalm today, now i got to turn back, because I've got my, uh, I got my ribbon here in a different spot. Our psalm today, again, as I said, I'm using the psalm from from Sunday here instead of the one from Monday. I think it's more fitting because it's from the from Psalm 119, verses 9 through 16. How can a young man keep his ways pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the just decrees of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight, as much as, I, as, much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I, just quickly and briefly here. Um, the law is certainly a guide for us. It teaches us how to live our lives in Christ. And we'll talk about that more after the readings. Um, but the law for the for the Hebrews was Torah. The whole, actually, the the whole of God's word was Torah. Life, life comes from this, and so you they want to cling to the to the word, right? And and all these words that are used in here, um, uh, commandment, statute, precept, and then testimonies. Uh, it's nice that in English they're different words. But I think if we delve to the Hebrew, at least a lot of places, it's all the same word, or, or very, very, at very least, if it's not the same word, it contains in, in it the same concept of God's commands. So let's come back to that after we've had the reading. Again, the readings are quite lengthy, so, uh, well, it's a little longer because it's two, right? So let's, uh, let's delve into this, beginning here in Exodus 20 with verses 1 through 24. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who's, who love and keep my commandments." You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed 
the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. Now, when all the people saw the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled, and they stood far off and said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us, lest we die. Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, that the fear of him may be before you that you may not sin. The people stood far off while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the people of Israel, You have seen for yourselves that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make gods of silver to be with me, nor shall you make for yourselves gods of gold. An altar of earth you shall make for me, and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. And every place where I cause my name to be remembered, I will come to you and bless you. Now we're going to jump to Monday's readings, which is Exodus 22 through 22:20 through 23:13. Whoever sacrifices to any other any god other than the Lord alone shall be devoted to destruction. You shall not wrong a sojourner or oppress him, for you are sojourners in the land of Egypt. You shall not mistreat any widow or fatherless child. If you do mistreat them, and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. And my wrath will burn, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall become widows and your children fatherless. If you lend money to any of my people with you who is poor, You shall not be like a money lender to him, and you shall not exact interest from him. If ever you take your neighbor's cloak and pledge, you shall return it to him before the sun goes down. For this is his only covering, and it is his cloak for his body. And what else shall he sleep? And if he cries to me, I will hear, for I am compassionate. You shall not revile God, nor curse a ruler of your people. You shall not delay to offer from the fullness of your harvest and from the outflow of your presses. The firstborn of your sons you shall give to me. You shall do the same with your oxen and your sheep. Seven days it shall be with its mother. On the eighth day you shall give it to me. You shall be consecrated to me. Therefore you shall not eat any flesh that is torn by beasts in the field. You shall throw it to the dogs. You shall not spread a false report. You shall not join hands with a wicked man to be a malicious witness. You shall not fall in with the many to do evil. Nor shall you bear witness in a lawsuit, siding with the many so as to pervert justice. Nor shall you be partial to a poor man in his lawsuit. If you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, you shall bring it back to him. If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying down under its burden, you shall refrain from leaving him with it. You shall rescue it with him. You shall not pervert the justice due to your poor in his lawsuit. Keep far from a false charge, and do not kill the innocent and the righteous, for I will not acquit the wicked. And you shall take no bribe, for a bribe blinds the clear-sighted and subverts the cause of those who are in the right. You shall not oppress a sojourner. You know the heart of a sojourner, for you are sojourners in the land of Egypt. For six years you shall sow your land and gather in its yield. But the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie fallow, that the poor of your people may eat, and what they leave the beasts of the field may eat. You shall do likewise with your vineyard and with your olive orchard. Six days you shall do your work, but on the seventh day you shall rest, 
that your ox and your donkey may have rest, and the son of your servant woman and the alien may be refreshed. Pay attention to all that I have said to you, and make no mention of the names of other gods, nor let it be heard on your lips. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We call them the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments. Um, but you heard it read, and there were no numbers, right? God didn't say, these are my holy commands first, second, third, no. Um, and in fact, the Hebrews didn't call it the commandments, but the ten words of the Lord. Um, because this is the word of the Lord, and those are words. And there are two common ways of numbering them, of numbering these Ten Commandments. Nobody argues about the first commandment. Uh, ecumenically, across all who confessed Christ, whether they agree in, in doctrines or not, um, we all agree on the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. Now, we used to teach it in the catechism, uh, the, the 41 catechism and before, uh, you shall have no other gods before me. Um, in more recent times, starting, I think, in 1986, we, our, our church body began teaching it as you shall have no other gods, right? Um, What's the difference? Well, one is placing those gods before somebody, or is it a primary? I, I don't know. I'd have to go and study the Hebrew. Um, I, I, it doesn't hurt to say you shall, just flat out, you shall have no other gods, right? There is but one God. Um, I mentioned in a sermon yesterday when I was preaching that I was speaking about God, but I wasn't saying our God because there's only one God. I don't have to say our God. There is only one God. Um, there are those things which man will worship as God. And how do we know what a God is? Well, a God is that in which we fear, love, and trust, that we depend upon for all things. And, and um, the ancient peoples and even peoples today will set up what we call idols, false gods, um, calling upon them to provide for them. And they put their trust in those things. Many in today's day and age put their trust in money, um, or in their uh, in their f family or their spouse, their children, um, in their work, uh, in their uh, abilities. All these have been given to us by God, and they are good gifts, and and we should be faithful to them and them faithful to us. But ultimately, our trust should be in God, who's, who is our creator, right? Um, and of, the, of all the commandments, the, the, beauty of, the beauty of Luther's explanation of the commandments is each commandment is twofold. And I'll come to that in a minute. But the first commandment doesn't have two folds. There's only one. You shall have no other gods. And Luther explains it, we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things, right? And when he says all things, he means all creatures in creation, above everything. Everything that is, was, or ever will be, God is first. So we all agree on that. But then there are some, I, I don't know if it comes out of the Reformed tradition or, or what have you, but I'm going to say Protestant. Remember, I don't think of, of confessional Lutherans scriptural Lutherans as Protestants uh, because we didn't protest the Roman Catholic Church. We, Luther sought to change it, reform it. Um, so I view confessional Lutherans, and when I say confessional, I mean scriptural. I mean subscribing to the scriptures as the inerrant uh, and true word of God and the uh, confessions of the Lutheran Church as, as a faithful exposition of those things without any qualifications. Um, 
we don't see, we, we don't, I'm sorry, I was starting with the Protestants. Quite often they will number um, what I think, believe, teach, and confess, and what the Lutheran confessions confess as an explanation of the first commandment as the second commandment, right? So you, you put this explanation as two, and then you combine what what Lutherans have traditionally seen as nine and 10. Uh, so we'll come to that. Let me just deal with the second commandment first. Well, the second command in the, Pro, in the Protestant is the explanation of the first commandment for a, a, a scriptural Lutheran, right? So God says, you shall have no other gods before me. Then he goes into this, this diatribe. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness or of anything that is heaven above, blah, 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 blah. You shall not bow down to them. You shall not place them in the altar before me. You shall not give them to your children or I will. So, uh, oh, good morning, Brenda. Uh, no, don't worry. I'm going long today. So you can't be late even if you tried. Um, if, if you tell your child, don't touch the pot on the oven, don't go near it, don't, don't even go over there, just stay completely away from it, right? Is that two separate commands? It's one, don't touch the pot. The rest of it's just clarification in case they were thinking of doing something, right? It's almost like, well, in the garden, God, God told Adam, do not eat of the tree in the center of the garden. And then when Adam told Eve, he said, don't, don't eat from the tree in the center of the garden. In fact, don't even go near it. Don't go close to it, right? It's all the same thing. So the Protestants make, make you shall make no graven images, the second commandment. Um, I don't think that the Catholic Church and the, and the Confessional Lutheran Church um, make the second commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, right? And in fact, today we teach as you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God because... Unfortunately, we've decided that it, instead of trying to teach our children what in vain means, we just say misuse, um, right? So that's where our numbering transfers. Um, then remember the Sabbath day, which for us is time in Christ, right? Time in God's word, taking time to be, our rest is found in Christ. Uh, by faith, we rest with Christ who rested from his work. Um, it's not about taking a day off, although biologically we need a day off. We need a day to just, <sighs> when you go 24, seven, 365, that's not what God wants for us. Um, in fact, the creation before the fall was continual rest, resting in God. Uh, there were things to be done, but it was perfect. So it was rest. It's by the fall into sin that we lose rest and everything becomes work. By the spread of sweat of your brow, you will eat bread. And so God has to command, look, I made the entire creation in six days and took a rest. You can rest once a week too. Not just you, but your servants and your animals and, and everything. Do nothing, right? But our rest is now found in Christ. Now that's not a, that's not a, um, opportunity sin, in other words, to say, well, God forgives, so I'm going to go fishing on Sunday morning. No, it's an opportunity to take Sunday morning to rest in Christ and in his word. So, take the third commandment, rest, the Sabbath rest. Um, honor your father and your mother. I always like that one. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Of course, he's, he's saying this to Israel so that when they come into the promised land, they will honor their their elders and the and the parents and the and the authorities. Um, but I, I do like that second part, right? Your days may be long in the land, right? I always I always I know Bill Cosby had himself in trouble and whatever. I don't want to get into that, but but I always like one of his comedy routines was was I'll take you out. I brought you into this world. I'll take you out. Um, and I always kind of laugh about that because when you defy your parents, remember they're the ones that with the help of God brought you into this world. And God has said that uh, in, in, somewhere in here, the law is given that if a, if a child will not listen to his parents and he should be taken outside the gate and stoned, there's no evidence of that ever happening. Right. But sometimes laws are there to prevent sinning. Oh wait, that's exactly what laws are for. 
is to prevent sinning. It's a curb. You shall not murder, right? And that's not you shall not kill. That's you shall not murder, right? A soldier doing his duty and given the command to attack the enemy and shoot to kill is not murdering. They're operating under the authority they've been given. God gave Joshua the command to go into the land of the Canaanites and devote everything to destruction. They didn't do all of it. You shall not you shall not wrongfully kill another person. You don't have the authority to kill somebody. God has the authority and uh, in, in addition to that uh, he's given it to the government, the authority to bear the sword. Rulers bear the sword uh, by God's will. And so they have the authority to use the death penalty, and so on. A police officer shooting and shooting a, a, a criminal who would kill him otherwise he is carrying out the lawful acts. Even uh, even a, a person in in self defense in fear of his own life from another attacker who shoots to kill is not committing murder. Are they killing? Yes. We kill deer. We kill birds, we kill rabbits, we kill squirrels, right? Hunting. Um, God said to Peter when he was on the roof of the, of the um, house, the sheet came down full of every crawling and creeping thing on earth. And God said, rise, Peter, kill and eat, not murder, kill and eat. By which he declared all foods clean. So the worst thing that ever happened was the King James in its original translation said, you shall not kill here. And it's caused consternation for many people who uh, insist on the King James. But the, the correct idea here in, in the Hebrew is the wrongful death of another. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. And this is not just the faithfulness between husband and wife, which is tantamount, but it's also faithfulness to God, to each other, right? You can commit adultery in ways, you can be unfaithful in ways besides to your spouse. So you shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shouldn't lie about somebody. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. Now, this is again where that separation, the numbering comes, nine and 10. Uh, the Protestant reformed whatever churches put nine and 10 together. They say coveting and, and then they group the whole thing together. What I see in this and what I teach and what I've learned is the first thing is you shall not covet your neighbor's house. That is to say his tangible property that is not living house, car, cell phone, computer, um, knife, gun, uh, possessions, right? Physical possessions. I'm trying to think of another word for that and I can't. Um, as opposed to the Tenth Commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Uh, i got to find it here. Uh, your neighbor's wife, male servant, male, female servant, ox, donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. The things which have the breath of life in them. You should not covet those things which are living, right? Uh, of course, coveting your neighbor's wife points us right to, to David with Bathsheba coveting Uriah's wife. Right, that, that's his first sin. He coveted your Bathsheba. The second sin comes in when he uh, sleeps with her, when he lies with her. Now he's committed adultery. Right, so that's two down. Right, right, committed adultery, uh, and then he attempts to get Uriah to go down to lay with his wife after calling him home from the front, from the from the battle, uh, which is almost false false witness against the neighbor. Um, and then he sends Uriah back to the front line to be killed. He committed murder. Yes, he did it with the authority of the king, but the king made a decision that intentionally caused the death of a, of a specific soldier, right? And all of those break the first commandment because in coveting, your, in coveting Bathsheba, he placed his own desires above God. In lying with her, he said, I'm more wise than God. I, I can commit adultery. I can be unfaithful or cause another to be unfaithful. Uh, and in killing, uh, in murdering uh, Uriah, he said, I have the authority that God has to kill a man. 
right, without being given the authority from God. Right? So that's how these work. The blessing of, of Luther's teaching on this, I began to say earlier, the blessing is that Luther shows us that for the old Adam, and, and this is the amazing thing about Lutheran doctrine and theology and teaching, is that we are no longer one. Like Christ it is, has two natures, right? Man and God. He's fully man and he's fully God. The Christian, the baptized in Christ, the believer, the follower of Christ, one who follows the way, whatever words you want to use, um, by faith and by baptism is now of two natures. The old Adam is in us still desiring to sin. And so the law says to the old Adam, um, you shall not steal. You shall not take anything that doesn't belong to you. Keep your hands off. There's a curb here. Don't do it. And a mirror to say, look, you do do it. You, you, the old Adam, you steal and you covet and you, and you are unfaithful, right? There's also a new creation in us, another nature, the nature that Christ has placed in us by his Holy Spirit and by faith, right? And that one doesn't hear, you shall not steal. It hears, you have been blessed with possessions that belong to you. You have been, you have been given the gift of faithfulness. You have been given the, 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 um, a good name, been given the the gift of a good name and so you know don't bear false witness against each other to the old half to the to the new half you've been blessed with a good name and so there's a the dichotomy right law and gospel the law stops sinning on the old adam's side on the new creation the new adam in us is given a guide of what we ought to do. How are we to do this? This is how you do it. And you now live in that. You do that naturally. Our hymn today was the law of God is good and wise. And it is. It is. To the to the faithful believer, it is good. The law is good. And to the Hebrew, the law was good. It was Torah. It was life. This is now how we live our lives. We don't steal. We don't commit adultery. We don't covet. Uh, do we? Yes, because we still have flesh with us. We're still dealing with that old Adam. But the new creation in us doesn't do those things, doesn't seek to do that. And it tells the old Adam in us, stop it, you're dead. You don't have the authority to do these things. The Ten Commandments are very, very important. Um, they didn't go away. Christ said, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill every part of it. Not one dot or tittle of it will pass away. His word does not pass away, and this is his word. The law still applies to the old Adam in us. But the new creature in us now lives for that law in Christ, who has fulfilled it, who has kept it for you. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day here. I'm going to stick with Sunday's prayer since that worked with the uh, commandments. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And that was actually the collect yet for um, for the second Sunday in, in Easter. Um, let's continue with the Apostles' Creed. How long am I going here? Oh, yeah, we're long. Good morning, friend of Fifield. Nice to see you here too. It's good news to hear that Larry's doing better. Uh, our Father, no, uh, what was it in no, Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And prayers for ourselves and others on this Monday morning. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for keeping me safe during the night. Now I pause at the gateway of another week to ask you to go with me. I do not know what this week holds, pleasure or pain, health or sickness, sunshine or shadow. However, I am not afraid if you will be my companion, for you love me with an everlasting love, and you guard and protect me from all evil. I need your presence every step of the way. At the beginning of this week, I ask only that you would stay close beside me. For though I do not know what the future holds, I know who holds the future. Bless me in whatever I do. Make me strong physically, mentally, morally, and spiritually. Watch over me and over those whom I love. I ask this in the name of your beloved Son, my Savior and Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. And... Uh, well, this is good. For readiness to forgive. Lord Jesus, I ask as Peter did, how often must I forgive those who sin against me and offend me? O oh Lord, if I am to forgive 70 times 7, then the grace and the will to do so come only from you. My sinful heart is resentful and often filled with bitterness against others. Often I have been hurt and sinned against. I must confess to you, Lord Jesus, that I do not find it easy to forgive and forget. Help me to do this, O Lord. I know that you have forgiven me times without number. That is why I am coming to you asking for help. Enable me in all sincerity of heart to say, as you did on the cross, Father, forgive them. And then help me to forgive as you have forgiven me more than 70 times 7. Hear my plea, plea gracious Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, you are the physician both of mind, of body, and of soul. You have redeemed us through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and you have promised to be with us always, never to forsake us. Nothing can take us from your hand, not death nor illness. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would be with those who have asked for our prayers on this day. Larry, Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Don, Brianne, Ashley, Susie, Bob, and all those whom we name in our hearts and who call upon your most holy name in faith. Grant them comfort in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, thanks for, hey, Michael. And Karen out there on the road in Moby. Uh, thanks for putting up with me for a little extra length today. I think those commandments are important. I think all of God's word is important. But um, there are obviously some points that you have to draw a line and say, this needs to be talked about more than that, which may depend on the day and the situation. Uh, tomorrow I have uh, the pastor's winkle. We moved it late in the month um, down in Merrill. Uh, so... One of two things are probably going to happen. Either I'm going to find some time this afternoon and pre-record uh, tomorrow's devotions, or I'm going to start earlier, like at 8:15. Um, either way, uh, either way, we'll be here tomorrow, either recorded or live. Just if it's live, it's earlier because it'll take me a little while to get 
uh, down there and I've got to be there a little earlier. So um, either either look for a post that says devotions at uh, 815 instead of 825. Starting at or starting at uh, yeah starting at 815 instead of 825, um, or regular time with a recorded one. Just depends on what the day brings me today. I got a lot of stuff to do that's kind of unplanned and unscheduled. You got to see how the float goes. So, God's peace be with you on this last Monday of April in the in the second week of Easter. And we'll see you one way or the other tomorrow. You'll see me one way or the other tomorrow. God's peace be with you.